so glad you can join us today. If this is your first time painting with us, then welcome. But if you're joining us again, then welcome back. I'm going to jump right in and have them roll all the colors across the screen that you'll need. And while they're doing that, I'm going to show you what I've got here. I have myself a standard 16x20 canvas with a light coat of metallic red. Just remember, you can use whatever you want. Now today, I'm taking a break from nature, water, trees, and I'm going to be painting an animal cell. These are the things that make up all the animals in the world, including you. If we did not have them, we really wouldn't be here, we'd all just be falling apart. To begin our cell, we're going to have to begin by painting all the tiny organelles that make up our cell, starting with the cytoplasm. This is the gel-like fluid that holds our other organelles inside. For this, I'll be using our cytoplasm blue, but animal cells are clear, so you can use whatever you want. So I'm going to start here and dance in a happy cytoplasm. And now that we are finished, we are going to outline our cytoplasm with the next organelle, the cell membrane. This is the barrier around the cell that determines what comes in and out, and can be described as selectively permeable, meaning that only a few things can pass through. So I'm going to start here and do a thin layer, maybe 3D-like, and go around. Now, though this is thin, the membrane goes through a process known as diffusion, which is where the molecules spread out of their high concentrated area to allow substances to pass, and then they reform. However, this is only paint, so it can't do that. Then again, you can do anything with paint. And now that our basic areas are done, we're going to jump to the nucleus, the control center of the cell, which uses nucleic acids to control all the things in the cell. We'll paint it as if it were cut, so we can see the inside. While we are outlining though, I'm going to tell you what we have here. This outline is the membrane surrounding the nucleus, called the nuclear membrane or nuclear envelope. This encloses the nucleus. Now, we'll first jump to using our lighter color, sunshine yellow, to paint the nucleolus first. This makes all the ribosomes, the proteins, which we will get to last, and sends them on their journey, which I'll also explain later. Now I will use a sponge with a mixture of colors and make the inside of the nucleus. Now the reason it has this type of texture is because of a tiny thread-like DNA called chromatin, but just to define these, I will paint a few lines throughout the inside. These make up the genes of the cell, which make up who you are. I'm just going to finish up here. And that's all. Next, we will paint the endoplasmic reticulum, the organelle where the important materials and substances travel to the Goldie body for packaging and distribution across a cell. It has two parts, the rough and smooth endoplasmic reticulum. The rough part carries ribosomes, whereas the smooth does not. I'm now going to finish with a bit more of our burnt sienna and raw umber. Now as you can see here, I made a few mistakes, but I'll just touch those up. And remember, in art, there's no such thing as mistakes, only happy accidents. Remember, those are what make your painting, because one thing that you consider an accident opens up a whole new world of possibilities. As we finish our endoplasmic reticulum, we will be moving on to the Golgi body, or the Golgi apparatus, whichever you want to call it. I'll be using pink at the top, and mix of reds at the bottom. I like to think of this organelle as the post office of our cell. It packages up all the important substances and distributes them to the other organelles. This is why the ribosomes are found everywhere in the cell, as you'll see later. Next, I'll be using blue to represent the small rod-shaped organelles known as mitochondria. These take all the substances that it gains and converts them into energy, as every organelle needs energy to do its job. I will paint it shown slightly cut in half to reveal all of its folds and other parts. And as every organelle needs a friend, I will paint a second mitochondria, maybe a third, whatever you want. In a real cell, there is a whole lot more, almost 2,000, but for painting, I'll only paint a few. Now the same thing goes for our vacuoles, which I'll be using light purple for. Now the vacuoles are the round bubble-like sacs in an animal cell that store food, water, nutrients, and waste within the cell. I'll be painting a few, with maybe some opened up so you can see the inside. And maybe right here lives our lysosomes, which like to eat. They consume and decompose all the dying and decaying matters and organelles inside the cell. They are useful, as we don't want any cells with unneeded parts inside them. Now I'm painting them here, 
but organelles move around, so put them wherever you see fit in your world. And lastly, I will paint those tiny organelles I keep mentioning called ribosomes. They contain ribonucleic acids, or RNA, which are the proteins every organelle needs to do its work. They start their journey in the endoplasmic reticulum, and they go to the Golgi body, where they are packaged and distributed throughout the cell. As I finish up with my pencil tip brush, go ahead and make sure your painting is how you want it. Remember, it's your painting, so the only one in control is you. Don't listen to anyone else. You be you. And I believe that completes our cell. I'll sign my name now, and we'll be done. I really hope you've enjoyed this painting. I know I have. Thank you for painting with us. I hope your painting came out just as nicely. Please feel free to send us a picture of your painting. I look forward to it. So until next time, thank you, happy painting, God bless, bye bye now.